Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Teresa's Crafty Cabana and today we are making some steampunk designs on the jelly plate. I did cut out my designs from a font that I downloaded. It was a free font from DaFont and I will link it in the description below. And I basically used my Silhouette uh, Studio and designed the elements to be different sizes. Uh, I wanted some that were going to be large and then I was going to layer some of the smaller ones kind of around it. Um, and then I had my small, smaller ones here that I was going to use as kind of like my, my elements as I was creating these steampunk designs. So if you don't know what steampunk is, steampunk as the definition in the dictionary is a genre of science fiction that has a historical setting typically features steam powered machinery rather than advanced technology um, and basically like it kind of has elements of industrialism so you get some gears some keys some um, pipes anything like that can be steampunk so um, as i was picking out my colors i picked out colors that i thought would be appropriate. I have um, some gold, some bronzes, some metallics because this industrial part. Um, for the textures I was picking out like cardboard, um, things with um, des designs that could be either like on, on the walls of industrialism. Um, I did a these clocks. Clocks are very industrial. Um, it was kind of fun picking out these elements trying to see what I already had in my stash that kind of fit into the theme of steampunk and then cutting out these additional elements to you know tie it all together. I did have some 3D embossing folders. They um that one of them was like a a sheet metal that looked like it had a little screws in it and stuff. So that one was um steampunk and then I had the gears that were pretty 3d looking that was steampunk and then um some of the brick and things so that's kind of what i'm i'm doing in these first few prints so every time i start a gel print session um, i have to try a few things before i know what direction i'm going to go so i just put paint down i just start layering things on and i just see what it looks like and then from there i discover what layers i like what colors i like where i think i could improve or where i can try to duplicate things so i do a lot of layers on these um, and then when i pull the final print i'm using black for my the background color so you can see this one's looking a little bit different than that first one. The first one was a little too maybe blue-green for me. This one had a little more of those metal tones and the gray tones, so I liked that better. Um, moving along, I just wanted to add all these little elements to my black, but then I wanted to remove the majority of the paint, so I just put my piece of paper down and just kind of pressed to remove as much of that black paint as I could. And then it had like an outline around my images. And these are all just paper. I can reuse them through this gel print session, but I'll probably not use them too much beyond this. They're not, they're not gonna last very long. So I put a little bit of metal color down, a, a metallic and some of the light blue and then like a seafoam blue and then I'm using my embossing folders. I've got circles, I've got this like words that are all kind of funny looking shapes to the words and some squares. So I'm just kind of layering some textures behind what I had already put on the plate, which were those, those little elements. I've got some clock texture. And then once that dried, I wanted to see what it would look like to really shine up my my gears and things, the, the metal-y things. So I used my Perfect Pearls and put that behind all the things that looked like they would be shiny. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content. Um, I do make videos weekly and I appreciate you being here to watch and I love hearing from you if you um, comment below and let me know what you're enjoying in my videos. I appreciate that. 
So here I put some blue and brown together and kind of made an ombre with them. And that's what's going to pull this next jelly print up. I am cracking my edges here just to make sure I did let this print dry completely. Um, so I do this um, just to make sure that I get my full image pulled off of the gel plate. So here is this one. It's looking a lot more interesting to me. I'm learning a lot more just by this print alone. Um, so now I know what I want to try to repeat and what I want to try a little bit different. So I'm going in with some brown paint first um, as my base layer. I'm taking one of those um, larger stencils that I had created out of my steampunk designs. This was the earth that was cut out of this shape. So first I'm going to go in and kind of brayer down some of these little shapes into this circle. And as the paint is still wet and I roll over my brayer, it removes that paint. Once the paint dries, then you can't remove it with your brayer anymore. So I am trying to act quickly here uh, so that my paint doesn't completely dry before I get the design on the gel plate. So once I remove that, I add a little bit of just the metallic color that I have right behind it. Then I'm going in with, this is my 3D gears. These gears look really cool. And it's just, I embossed a piece of cardstock. And I have a little bit of mesh. This is just a metal mesh piece. And then I have the earth that I had cut out and I'm putting that right on top. And I'm just gonna go around it with my pearl powders. And now I'm ready to put my paint behind it. I'm gonna use these two blue color, it's a blue and like a seafoam green or pistachio green. Yeah, it looks like seafoam once I blend them though. Got more of my cardboard texture that I'm gonna put behind it. And then this is my brick texture, brick wall. Got some of my gears I'm gonna put in there too. This is the alpha, the alphabets. I let that dry completely and now I'm gonna go back in with, this is actually a um, mica powder from Dollar Tree. It's a silver color. And since you don't have to wait for pearl powders to dry, then I just went in with my black paint over the top. I did let it dry completely, probably about 15 minutes. And then this is what this next one's looking like. You can't really tell the earth is there, but it's starting to have um, the tone of what I'm looking for with the steampunk and the different layers. So I'm going to do another one now with this really cool looking face. Um, as I only cut this out of paper, uh, there was a lot of paint I applied on top of this um, stencil. As I was going along, part of the little eye piece just came apart, so which is okay because I liked the opening in the eye area anyway. I took these little gear pieces that I had cut out and I was just getting some texture in my gold paint that I put around this face.
After that layer dried, I put some more of my brown paint down and a little bit of my black on the bottom and then I just made those into an ombre. As I was pressing in around that eye, this is where the part of the stencil came apart. I didn't end up going over it again with my brayer just to keep the circle that was there. And while this paint is still wet, I'm going to remove the masking there. I've got my 3D gears. I'm just gonna press those in. And then we're gonna go around all those gear pieces with my perfect pearls. Then I'm going in with my brown and a cream color and I'm gonna blend those out. I wanted a little bit of texture on that face, so I'm doing just some more of my embossing folders, one that looks like a chevron, my sheet metal, and my brick. And then I've got this as another mesh piece that I had just to give a little more texture to the whole image. And once that dried, I went in with a little bit of this bright turquoise color or aqua color just behind the, the face area. And then I removed some of that paint with my cardboard. Once that dried, I went back in with my perfect pearls over those lines. And now I'm ready to pull this whole print up, so I put my black behind it. I just need to get a nice even layer, and it has to be a fairly thick amount of paint so that it'll pick up all of those layers underneath. For the paper that I'm using to pull these prints, it's copy paper. And this one is looking a lot more like what I was imagining, having um, one kind of larger image and then smaller images surrounding it and inside it and around it. So this to me looks very steampunk and I was really liking how that was going. So I wanted to create another one just with that same kind of feeling to, to have the layered look, um, smaller design um, around the bigger design. So my bigger design is the earth this time. I'm taking my small little gear, 3D gears, and I'm just gonna fill in the spaces there. And I've got, this is just a line texture. Again, an embossing folder that I have, stripes. And this is my sheet metal embossing folder. And again, I'm going in with my perfect pearls to capture the look of metal. And being very careful with my paper mask just because I want to use it again so it does get stuck pretty well on the gel plate. Then 
Now I'm gonna put some of my green and brown down, blend those together. This is my sheet metal. I wanted a little bit of texture behind the earth, the openings in the earth, so that my final layer would show through from the very back. So I let that dry and now I'm going in with my navy color. And this is what I'm going to use to pull my print up. I let it dry for about 15 minutes. And then this is what this one looks th I think this one also looks very steampunk, kind of the grungy, but it's got the metallics and the industrial look to it. So I thought this one was looking really cool. And I liked how it had the pop of blue in the back. So now I have this turquoise and green that I'm going to brayer together. I have this hat, just this large hat I cut out, and I'm just kind of pressing it in uh, to the background. And to really press it down, I'm using my brayer on top of my gears. I'm just going to keep using my embossing folders to remove some of the paint and leave behind the texture. This is that metal sheet that I have. I did let that dry and I left the hat on during this part and I'm putting some bronze paint or copper paint behind it and now I'll remove that hat and I have the other side of the hat so I'll have the opposite part of the stencil that way I don't get any of my paint on the other part. So now I'm going to put black inside here what I did was I put some paint onto my brayer off sheet and I'm just kind of rolling my brayer into that and then bringing it over to the hat. Now I've got some more of my little elements. This is a little horse element. I've got a little mess mustache it has two pieces to it. And I have a little umbrella. And this is a little key. I'm removing all of my little stencil pieces. I forgot to record this part, but I did put Perfect Pearls around these little gear pieces that I had laid down, um, just in these two colors, just to fill in a little bit of the background there. And then now I'm going in with some of my metallic silver color. For this metallic, I'm just trying to get it mostly just behind the hat area. I'm blending it out on the other parts. Now, I'm, once that dried, I put my black behind it and that is what I'm gonna use to pull this print up. This print left me speechless when I saw it. It just looks so cool. It looked like there was dimension inside of the hat and it really popped from that blue and green background. Again, this felt so steampunk and I only did the pearls in the middle this time. So I just thought it would look so cool. So 
I went on to make my next print. I'm using that face again. And then this first print, one of the first few prints that I did, it just looked a little flat compared to these much cooler looking prints. So I wanted to add another layer to it. So I'm just putting some black behind this mask. Then I'm gonna take my gear. Uh, first I'm gonna take my brick and put a little bit of brick behind the face. And then I'll take my 3D gears. I think this one looks cool as the eyeball. And I've got some chevron. Now I just removed my mask and then I have this is kind of what I had done in the hat, inside the hat, is I took my little shapes and put the perfect pearls around them and just kept moving the shapes around the open space of the gel plate. So now that I had all that cool texture and design inside the face area, I took my metallic color and that's what I'm going to use to layer on top of this one of the original prints that I had done. And this looks so cool. You can see that gray really pops from the black and the pearl powders in the inside really kind of just create some interesting dimension. So what's different about this one than the hat is the hat I had, each of those elements had some black around them and these didn't have black around them. So now I'm going in with my little globe and taking my embossing folders, the gears, the chevron, and then the 3D gears. And once that dried, now I'm gonna go in with my metallics again with the perfect pearls. And now I've got a few more of my little images here that I'm gonna just place on the open areas left on the gel plate. I can still see the gel plate through. Take a little bit of my black paint with my small brayer. And again, I'm just trying to create that outline. Then I've got my metallic paint again. And I'm putting a little more of my 3D gears uh, kind of where the earth pieces are. That first print that I had done that I wasn't too thrilled about, I'm going to use that to pull up this print. And you can see how much different this turned out. So we've got a lot more texture to this. You can still see the blue and green very slight in the background of the earth area where I removed some of that paint but for the most part, it changes the entire look of this print. And it looks, again, very industrial, very steampunk to me. This was another one I wanted to kind of fix up a little bit. I couldn't see that earth very well, so I wanted to see how I could maybe make that stand out a little bit better. I'm just putting a little bit of black paint behind the, the earth image. These are my 3D gears.
I've got this golden Titan buff color. This was just one of those pull-offs I had done early on and I wanted to do something with this print. So I'm going to use that as my background and this other part is going to be the, the foreground of this print. Now the golden paint, the, the whitish color, it is, um, you can see through it just a little bit so you can just barely see those designs in the background but I think it looks so cool. Um, it looks very um, brick-like and the gears and the earth, they look really cool and they stand out from the white background with those perfect pearls. So now I'm going in with my metal color and I'm just filling that into the circle and I'm again removing the paint with some of my little cutouts. I did let that dry and I put down the earth circle and I put black behind it. Going back over it with my 3D gear pieces. Let it dry and going back in with my pearls. This is the metal color again. I'm removing some of that so that the the first jelly print that I put through, this is that bluish one, I'm putting that on top. So that blue will be on the bottom. And you can see the earth, it shows up real nice now. But I, I still felt like this needed a little more black. So I set that one aside as I decided what I wanted to do to finish that one out. For this next one, um, I'm finishing up another one that I had started earlier. Um, this is just the silhouette with the 3D gears all around it. And I didn't do the perfect pearls on it. While that paint was still wet, I put the jelly print down and just removed some of that paint onto this, one of these original jelly prints I had done. So now you can see it has a little more of the, the black outline of that face and it doesn't take away too much from what was already there. So for that last one, the one that I felt like it needed a little something extra, I brayered on some of my black, removed some of the paint with the silhouette and did the 3D or the gears around it. And then while that paint was still wet, I put the gel print down and you can see it looks like the head has a globe inside of it and again it just has that nice amount of black to kind of ground it a little bit so um, these are the prints let's go through so this was the first one then the second one here that I had cleaned up and fixed this one had the white kind of the golden um, Titan buff on it this one had the blue in the background that I had cleaned. This was another one of those original prints that I tried getting a, a little more interest on. And this one also was one of my original prints that I didn't like originally. And then um, after doing the second layer to it, I really like it. This one had the navy blue in the background. I really love this one. I love the turquoise and the brown and then how that copper kind of hits in the middle of the head. It just looks so cool. And then of course I love this one. This one looks 3D, like the hat is kind of th three dimensional with the um, perfect pearl pieces in there. And it just looks so neat to me. So these are my jelly prints for my steampunk inspiration. Uh, my husband gave me the inspiration to do this and he wanted to see what I would come up with if I just tried steampunk. So I, I think these capture steampunk for what I think of for steampunk. What do you think? Is this something that you would think of for this genre? I don't know. Um, 
I think the only thing I didn't really do as much in this is like keys. I see a lot of keys in steampunk, so, um, but I really like the gears. I thought those turned out so cool. And with the metals, the metal pieces, the perfect pearls, um, I just think they turned out really neat. So hopefully you enjoyed watching and I inspired you to try something new and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Happy crafting.